We're back with Michael Chertoff. Uh, Secretary Chertoff, we live in an age when there is just an extraordinary amount of data and it's an exploding amount of data uh, about us, uh, about individuals um, available everywhere on the internet we submit data. Mm. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned about the privacy, that companies have access to this data, that government has access to this data, uh, and that we just can't really any longer expect any kind of privacy. What's the, what's the right, right way of, of thinking about this and about dealing with this, uh, with this data issue? Well, first of all, I agree. We have uh, seen a, uh, an explosion in the amount of data that's available about people. And it's not just what people put on social media that they're aware of. It's things that are collected about them or things that others will post and will wind up being assimilated and aggregated. So it could be things like every time you buy anything with a credit card. Correct. Or, yeah, every, all your credit it. cards, what, what, what your friends put on their Facebook accounts, all of this can be collected. And now there are people who have monetized it by making a business <clears throat> of aggregating it and using it for all kinds of purposes. And this gets to the point that it's not just about privacy in the kind of common sense, but it's really about your freedom. Because a world in which somebody is able to track everything you buy, see, do, how you sleep, how you exercise, is a world where you can begin to exert pressure on people. By the way, the paradigmatic case of that is China, where they now are developing a social credit score based on your activities, that is essentially going to be a soft version of 1984. And a sort of facial surveillance, facial recognition software, which uh, really is Big Brother territory, right? And it goes beyond Big Brother, because in, big, in 1984 with Big Brother, you had to be in front of the telescreen. Mm. Now, every place you go, someone can monitor you, and then you become aware of that, and that begins to condition your conduct. We've had lots of cases in the last year, Facebook probably most notably, um, where people have raised concerns that the companies don't seem to be using the data responsibly, passing on personal data to third parties. Do you think companies are handling data properly right now? What should we do about it? I think the urge to uh, monetize, transfer, or otherwise exploit the data outran a set of rules and common sense that have to apply. And that's one of the reasons I wrote the book, because I do think we need to hit reset on all of this. And now I think it's beginning to affect the, the market for these companies, because they're beginning to get blowback, reputational blowback. So they have, I think, gotten serious now about they need to address this issue. The challenge is it's difficult to do unless you really strictly limit the conditions under which data can be transferred. Now, in Europe, We've got a regulation now. It's a little bureaucratic. G GDPR, as they right. call it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. does give people the right to have a say before their data is used for a different purpose. Mm. And I think that's a pretty good idea. Is there really any alternative? If you want to really protect your privacy now, to just basically going completely dark and going off the grid, because, because it's just impossible, as you say, and even with you know, cameras and surveillance and everything like that, how on earth, if you're really concerned about your privacy and you don't want companies to know what you're doing and you don't want to be bombarded with, with um, you know, offers to do everything and you don't like the idea of people knowing what you're doing, is there any, is there any way of protecting your privacy? You know, short of becoming a hermit, I don't, I don't think you can totally protect your privacy, but I do think you can make what I call mindful decisions about what you sign up for, what information you transmit, even whether your phone is on or not. Uh, and to that extent, you can reduce your exposure. But I also think this is an area where ultimately government is going to have to get involved, and there's going to have to be a set of rules about what companies need to do to get your OK before they adapt your information. Because right now they can pretty well get it almost automatically. I mean, one of the things that the Europeans have introduced is, and anybody who's seen this goes to a website now and almost immediately gets asked, you know, especially if it's, if it's covered by the European law, you know, they, they need to get approval for, 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 for cookies and all that kind of stuff. Is, is there more, though, that can be done than that to actually enable people to enjoy all the benefits of their digital world without feeling that they're I, actually I, being I think there is. I think two things in which I talk about in the book are, first of all, you can give people better visibility into where their data is and where it's been headed. But also with respect to those platforms that essentially have monopoly control, uh, you've got to, I think, require them to give users a choice. They can uh, allow their data to be exploited and have it as a, quote, free service, or they can pay for it. I'm not saying you ought to give these things away. Companies entitled to make money. But you ought to give people the option, if they don't want to have their data used, for other purposes to say, fine, I'll pay a subscription fee.